Timo's laboratory. Removal of insoluble impurities from water. The drinking water we use in our daily life is obtained from various sources like lakes and rivers which are mostly polluted. The polluted water is purified by purification equipments through various processes like sublimation. Let us discuss about these processes in the following experiments. Decantation. Take some impure water and allow it to rest for a few hours. The suspended soil particles in the sample of water settles down at the bottom as sediments. This is called sedimentation. The clear water can be seen at the top. The sediments can be removed from the water by gradually pouring the clear water into another container without disturbing the sediments at the bottom. Filtration Separation of insoluble impurities with the help of a filter paper is called filtration. Take a glass jar, paper board and some impure water. First, make a funnel in the paper board and pour the impure water through the funnel made of paper board. The insoluble substances are caught in the filter paper and drops of clear water trickle into the beaker kept under the funnel and collects as a filtrate. The water thus collected is free from solid particles and this process is called filtration. Measurement of Volume In our daily life, the things we buy from shops for our daily needs are all packed and its measurements is mentioned in kilograms, liters and meters. Let us discuss about the ways of measurements in the following experiment. Here's a block of length 1 cm, breadth 1 cm and height 1 cm. Now, the capacity of the block to hold something inside it is known as its volume. The volume of this block is the product of its length multiplied by breadth multiplied by height. 1 cm into 1 cm into 1 cm is equal to 1 and its unit is centimeter cube. Therefore, the volume of this block is 1 cm cube. Volume is equal to length into breadth into height. What will be the volume of a cube having each side equal to 10 cm? Volume is equal to 10 cm into 10 cm into 10 cm is equal to 1000 cm cube. But 1000 cm cube is equal to 1 liter. A liter is divided into milliliters. 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter. Hence, 1 cm cube is equal to 1 milliliter. In the laboratory, we measure volume by using the measuring cylinder, the burette and the pipette. A measuring cylinder can be used to measure the volume of a solid also. Take water in a measuring cylinder and note its initial level. Now, gently lower stone into the water. The water level rises. Note the new level of water. The difference between the two levels of water gives the volume of the stone. Floating objects. You must have observed that certain objects like ice, cork, wood, etc. float in water, but certain objects like iron, stone, etc. sink in water. Only those objects float in water whose density is less than that of the water. If the density of an object is greater than that of water, the object sinks in water. For example, iron. 
the upward push of water on a floating object is called upthrust or bioent force. Take three glass bowls and fill the first one with mercury, second one with water and the third one with kerosene. Take three corks of same weight and put one in each bowl and observe. The first cock in mercury does not sink, it floats. The second one in water is floating. But the third one in the kerosene has sunk. Bioent force is one factor that helps things to float. Density of the object is another factor that makes it float or sink. The same object may sink to different depths in different liquids. It is because densities of different liquids vary. So, an object which floats in water can sink in kerosene which is less dense than water. Similarly, an object which can float in mercury may sink in water. Mercury is the densest of all liquids. We can measure the densities of all liquids with the help of an instrument called hydrometer. Gravitational force. All objects, when let go, fall freely towards the ground. A stone or an apple, when released, falls freely towards the ground. This is because of the force which the earth exerts on all objects on or near its surface. This force is termed as gravitational force. There is a popular story that Newton was sitting under an apple tree and an apple fell on his head and he suddenly thought of the universal law of gravitation. As in all such legends, this is almost certainly not true in its details, but the story contains elements of what actually happened. The constant of proportionality G is known as the universal gravitational constant. It is termed a universal constant because it is thought to be the same at all places and all times and thus universally characterizes the intrinsic strength of the gravitational force. Frictional force The force acting between two surfaces in contact and tending to oppose motion is called the force of friction or frictional force. Observe this car moving on the road. The driver wants to stop the car by the yellow line. He operates the car brake. Car slows down. Observe the car has crossed a little beyond the yellow line. What is the reason? Observe the tire buttons of the car. It is worn out. There is no gap between the road surface and the tire bottom. Hence, there is no way for air to penetrate and it lacks gripness on the road. Observe this car. The driver wants to stop the car by the yellow line. He operates the car brake. Car slows down. Observe the car has stopped on the yellow line. The tire is new and in good condition. So, there is space between the tire buttons and road surface. Hence, air circulates and causes gripness. This is due to frictional force. Observe a man walking on a slippery floor. His shoes are in a good condition. There is space between his shoes and the floor. Air penetrates through the gap and causes gripness. This is another example for frictional force. Magnetic force In industries, magnetic force is used to lift or transport heavy iron materials. Magnetic force is also used to identify the directions. 
let us discuss about the magnetic force in the following experiment. You have often seen a magnet and played with it. It attracts iron nails, pins and other iron objects. It can also attract or repel another magnet. We call all forces associated with magnets as magnetic forces. Static electricity. Electricity is a type of energy and is present in many forms. We can see this through an experiment. To reveal static electricity, let us do a simple experiment. Take a plastic rod, woolen cloth and a paper. Cut the paper into small pieces. Take the plastic rod and bring it near the small pieces of paper. What does happen? Just nothing. Now. Rub this plastic rod with wool briskly and bring it again near the same pieces of paper. This time the pieces of paper stick to the rod. This happens because the rod gets electrically charged due to rubbing. When you rub a plastic rod with wool, it starts attracting small objects like paper pieces etc. This is called static electricity. Change of state due to heat. Due to the atmospheric heat, the solid state ice mountains melt to the liquid state and join the sea. Again, the liquid state water vaporizes to gas and forms cloud. The gas state cloud cools and gets converted as liquid state rain. This takes place as a cycle. Let us see the experiment based on this principle. Take a candle. Cut the candle into small pieces and place the pieces in a dish. Heat the dish. See what happens. The candle melts. Stop heating. Let it cool. Observe the change. On heating, solid candle changes into liquid form and on cooling it changes into solid. Oxygen in water is used for burning. The drinking water we use contains oxygen and hydrogen molecules which are used for burning or lighting a flame. Let us discuss in the following experiment about how the oxygen present in water helps in burning at times. Take a candle, a glass jar, a shallow tray and some water. Take the shallow tray and fix the candle in it. Fill water in the tray. Light the candle. Take a glass. Mark it into five equal parts. Invert the glass over the lighted candle. Observe what happens to the candle. What happens to the water in the tray? Why does water rise in the glass? Rising of the water level to mark 1 in the glass shows that one-fifth of the air in the glass is used up during burning. In this experiment, as we have closed the candle with a glass jar, the oxygen in the air inside the jar has been completely used and then the candle utilizes the oxygen present in the water for burning.
as the oxygen present in the water has been used the level of water increases when the oxygen present in water is fully utilized the candle stops burning as the oxygen from atmosphere cannot enter into the jar air is used for burning the air is invisible and helps us in many ways in our daily life it helps to burn things also in the following experiment let us discuss about the vital role of air in burning a flame take three candles a small and a big glass jars fix the three candles on a table and light them cover the second and third candles with a small and big glass jars observe and record how many seconds it takes for each candle to go out it is observed that the candle covered with a small jar goes out earlier than the candle covered with a big jar because of the more air present inside it also we can note that the candle left uncovered goes on burning due to the air in the atmosphere this shows that the flame needs air to burn air exerts pressure air acts on everything and presses in all directions if you squeeze an empty plastic bottle and then release it the bottle will regain its shape this is because air enters the bottle and pushes the sides out again if you squeeze the bottle and then place the cap on the bottle will not take up its original shape this is because the air outside the bottle is pressing the sides in air presses on our body too our body does not get crushed due to air because the body too contains air the following two experiments will show how air exerts pressure on everything take a glass a board and water over the empty glass top press the paper down firmly and turn the glass over and remove your hand the paper goes down now take some water fill the water in the glass right up to the brim slide a stiff piece of paper over the top and press the paper down firmly now turn the glass over and remove your hand you will be surprised that the water and the paper do not fall down it is because air from below is exerting pressure and this pressure is supporting the paper in position air has weight air is in gaseous state which cannot be seen by naked eye but during rainy season or when cyclone takes place it has the capacity to destroy plants even big trees and houses if the invisible air has such a property then we can conclude that air has weight let us see the experiment based on this principle take two balloons a stick and a thread first inflate the two balloons of the same size with air tie them and check with a weight machine now 
tie the balloons to the end of a stick. Tie a string to the middle of the stick and see that the balloons are balanced. This is because the weight on either end of the stick is equal and the stick is balanced. Now, take a sharp needle and prick one of the balloons near its neck. Air escapes through the spin hole slowly. You will see that the balloon on the other end slowly brings the scale down at its end. This shows that the balloon with air in it is heavier and hence the scale tilts. This experiment proves that air has weight. Air occupies space. All the means of transport we watch in our daily life balance on the air pressure of the tubes present in the tire. Once the tire gets punctured, the vehicle loses its balance since the air escapes due to the puncture in the tube. Let us discuss the above principle in the following experiment. Air is used to inflate rubber tubes, balloons and other objects as it can be squeezed into smaller spaces. We say it can be compressed. Compressed air exerts a greater pressure. Tires filled with extra air can support bicycles, cars and even aircrafts. The air pressure in the tire makes it behave like a cushion and we do not feel the bumps on the road. In the same way, the air pressure in the basketballs and footballs keeps the balls hard and makes them tight so that they can bounce. All the above examples show that air occupies space. Natural dye Nowadays, nearly all dyes are made synthetically, but in the past, most of these were made from plants like leaves, woods, flowers, sand and stones, etc. Let us dye a handkerchief with a natural dye. Take a red color flower, a handkerchief, a paper board, a pencil and a cutter. On the paper board, draw the design of your choice and cut the design with the help of a cutter. Remove the inner part of the board and then take the red color flower and pick the red petals separately. Put them in a piece of cloth and fold them and crush them well. Put this cut out design over the handkerchief and dab the handkerchief with a cloth bag containing the crushed flowers. The dye transfers to the handkerchief and makes the shape already cut out. We can do the same thing for making different designs. The designs are made from natural dye. These dyes are made in industries, etc.